This is a video about cesarean section scar pregnancies. My name is Dr Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. This talk will include definitions of a cesarean scar pregnancy, how cesarean scar pregnancies are a precursor of morbidly adherent placenta, some ultrasound images in the first trimester and conclusions. A caesarean scar pregnancy is a form of ectopic pregnancy associated with high maternal morbidity and mortality. It is defined as the gestational sac or trophoblast presenting within the dehiscence or niche of the previous section scar or implanted on top of it. This is an iatrogenic condition first described in 1990 and only nine cases were reported before 2000 in the literature but now the incidence is thought to be one in 2,000 pregnancies. Around 20% of scars are severely deficient, which predisposes to scar implantation. The risk of a scar pregnancy increases with the number of previous caesarean sections, but most of these scar pregnancies fail in the first trimester due to reduced blood supply. Those that develop beyond the first trimester will develop into a morbidly adherent placenta, MAP, or Abnormally Invasive Placenta, AIP, a definition which includes placenta accreta, increta, and percreta. Caesarean scar pregnancies implanted on the scar seem to have a better outcome than scar pregnancies implanted into the niche. More of that in a minute. The definition of a scar pregnancy, which is now an internationally agreed definition, is that the uterine cavity itself is empty. The placenta and or gestational sac is embedded in the hysterotomy scar, so the sliding sign is negative. There's a triangular gestational sac filling the niche of the scar, and a thin myometrium or possibly absent myometrium between the sac and the bladder. The cervix should be closed and the endocervical canal empty. You will see an embryonic or a fetal pole with or without fetal heart uh, and or just a yolk sac. The vascularity will be prominent and at times very rich at or around the chorionic sac and placenta. The vascularity is to confirm that the trophoblast is adherent to the myometrium rather than free. You use colour Doppler at a PRF of about 0.6 which is equivalent to a velocity of 4 cm per second. The differential diagnosis of a caesarean scar pregnancy is a normal but low-lying intrauterine pregnancy. In this case, the placenta will not be overlying the caesarean section scar, so look for the cord. Where does it attach to the placenta and where is the placenta attached to the uterus? Another possibility is a miscarriage in progress. In this case, the pregnancy will slide in the uterus on pressure with the probe and not be implanted low. Or a cervical pregnancy. In this case, the pregnancy will be located below the internal cervical os, that is, in the cervical canal. Just quickly, the definitions of a placenta previa. This is where the placenta is inserted wholly or partly into the lower segment of the uterus. Either minor, where it does not cover the internal os, or major, where it covers the internal os. A morbidly adherent placenta, or abnormally invasive placenta, this is the same thing. This is an abnormal placental attachment to the uterus, either placenta accreta, where the trophoblast is attached to the myometrium, placenta increta, which is deeper, where the trophoblast invades into the myometrium, and placenta percreta, where the trophoblast invades through the myometrium to the serosa and or the adjacent structures. The known risk factors for a morbidly adherent placenta in the second and third trimester is a previous caesarean section with a placenta previa or low-lying placenta. Other risk factors are previous myomectomy, uterine curatage, submucosal fibroids, thermal ablation, uterine artery embolization, advanced maternal age and multiparity. But you can diagnose a caesarean scar pregnancy in the first trimester using transvaginal ultrasound. It's best if, if the patient has a partly filled bladder and you need some experience to diagnose these. 
it becomes much harder to diagnose a scarred pregnancy after around seven or eight weeks as the pregnancy then begins to fill the uterine cavity and it's harder to see where it's implanted. Here are some normal caesarean section scars on an ultrasound. This is a very magnified view of a longitudinal section through the uterus. Here's the cervical canal. This is more or less the region of the internal os. This is an antiverted uterus. You can see the endometrial cavity would be here. And this patient had had three caesarean sections and they're all low down, as you can see. The bladder would be up here in the way I orientate the probe. This again is the cervical canal. It's an antiverted uterus. Most, most of the uterus is up here. This is where the bladder attaches to the uterus. So this is more or less the region of the internal os. And here you can see the section scar and then a little bit of closed endometrial cavity and then the intrauterine pregnancy. You can see it's a long way away from the cesarean scar. The criteria for diagnosing a caesarean scar pregnancy uh, are again uh, confirmed in this paper and they're demonstrated in this image. An empty uterine cavity. This again is an antiverted uterus. You can see the cervical canal, then trophoblast up here into the niche. Then you can see the endometrial cavity is here and then it goes back up there. So you can see that the upper endometrial cavity, the uterine cavity is empty. The placenta or gestational sac should be embedded in the hysterotomy scar. So here you can see, it's not the best, but I'll show you a better picture in a minute. This is trophoblast embedded deeply into a niche. And I can't show you the negative sliding sign in this still image, but you can see strong vascularity where the trophoblast is actually invading the myometrium. A triangular gestation sac. Here you can just see a little triangle. Sometimes that is more obvious than in other times um, because the niche of this scar is in fact filled with trophoblast, not so much the sac. A thin or absent myometrium between the sac and the bladder. In this case, the bladder is empty. It's better if you have it slightly filled. I'll show you a good video in a minute. Closed cervix, an empty endocervical canal. Here again is where the bladder attaches to the um, uterus. So this is more or less the level of the internal os. So this is the cervical canal and you can see that the pregnancy is nowhere near it. Then you need either um, a, a, a yolk sac and or an embryo with or without a fetal heart. And prominent vascularity showing that the trophoblast is embedded in the myometrium and not just passing through in case of a miscarriage. Then the other differentiation we now make since the paper from 2017 is that the scar pregnancy can be on the scar or in the niche. And if the pregnancy is on the scar, it means the placenta is implanted partially or fully on top of a well-healed scar. And if the myometrial thickness in the region of the scar is around four millimeters or more, that would predict a good outcome. Whereas if the scar pregnancy is embedded in the niche, then the placenta is implanted into a deficient or a decent scar, as it's called a niche. And the myometrial thickness, if that's less than two millimeters, this is predictive of a patient if the pregnancy continues who will develop a morbidly adherent placenta. So what does that look like? Again, it's an antiverted uterus. This is the, the region of the internal os just here and an empty cervical canal. You can see that triangular gestation sac and here you can see quite a thick and well healed section scar. So this pregnancy is implanted on top of the scar. Whereas this one, you can see this here is the caesarean section scar. It's become a cup shaped niche. It's very deficient and the trophoblast has embedded within it. All of this is trophoblast and you can just still see that slight triangle there. That these pregnancies, if they continue into the second and third trimester, will develop into a morbidly adherent placenta. So I have an example for you. This patient was 27 years old and attended us in her second pregnancy. She'd had one child by elective caesarean section. She developed some vaginal bleeding at five weeks and had had some light loss ever since. She had an ultrasound examination for the first time at eight weeks, which showed a caesarean scar pregnancy. 
She was eventually delivered by elective caesarean section at 39 weeks with excision of a morbidly adherent placenta, a placenta percreta on histology. This is the example I will show you in a minute. This patient is now at eight weeks gestation. The cervix is closed and I'll show you again this pregnancy here. Is, it looks very low, you immediately see it. You can see a bulging, what we would call a lower segment. <laughs> And then here is an empty endometrial cavity uh, at the top. So instantly this looks like a cesarean scar pregnancy, but we will need to demonstrate the vascularity there. So this is a video of this patient uh, at eight weeks gestation, and it demonstrates all of the features of a cesarean scar pregnancy. So as I said, the uterine cavity at the top here, the uterine cavity is empty. The placenta uh, and the gestation sac is embedded within the niche of the cesarean scar pregnancy. It's a cesarean scar, you can see a little bit of bleeding underneath. And the myometrium here is very thin uh, between it and bladder, but I'll show you that better in just a moment. Very thin overlying myometrium. The cervix was closed and the cervical canal was, was empty, as we already said. And you can see here that there's a, a fetus here with a heartbeat. This was a viable caesarean scar pregnancy. Here you can see the vascularity, so I've put the colour Doppler on and this is the abnormal vessels from the trophoblast. Because the niche is relatively hypoxic, these vessels uh, invade looking for a better blood supply rather than they can get from the scar tissue and you can see very strong vascularity. This is embedded within the niche, it's not passing through, it's not part of, uh, of a miscarriage. And then when you want to look whether the vessels are crossing over into the bladder, into the, the, the bladder serosa or even into the mucosa, you can see here this is a normal sliding sign that the bladder is moving normally on the anterior uterus um, and I'd already shown that the vessels did not go across into the bladder. So these again are, is the definition for a caesarean scar pregnancy on ultrasound, an empty uterine cavity, placenta or trophoblast embedded in the caesarean scar with a negative sliding sign, triangular gestational fac sac filling the niche, thin or no overlying myometrium, a closed cervix, uh, a, a yolk sac and or an embryo with or without fetal heart, and prominent vascularity uh, where the trophoblast is invading the uh, anterior uterine wall. And we know now that caesarean scar pregnancies are a precursor of morbidly adherent placentas and that these can be diagnosed accurately in the first trimester. It's important to alert a sonographer to a woman who's had a previous caesarean section. Do write this on the scan request card. But for any sonographer, be aware when you think there's a, a pregnancy lying low in the uterus with an anterior placenta um, in a patient with a previous caesarean section. Think scar pregnancy. These are the papers that are essential reading. The first paper was published in 1990, 2003. And then you can see there are many more papers since then. I've only taken a selection of papers, but I would recommend that you read these. Just a few more. You can pause the video at any time and uh, make a note of which paper this is and get them from PubMed. They're all free access papers. Thank you very much.